Pennsylvania is all around us, and we want to help you to explore our state. Hi, I'm Sherry Trimble, museum educator at the State Museum of Pennsylvania. Join me today as we explore candle making. Did you know that people have been lighting their homes with candles for over 2,500 years? Candle makers are called chandlers. Early candles use wicks made of reed and string dipped into tallow or melted fat from kitchen scraps. These candles were very smelly and were not very bright. A better option than tallow was sweet smelling and brighter beeswax, but only the wealthy could afford such luxuries. When colonists arrived in Pennsylvania, tallow candles were still the main light source. Did you know that Benjamin Franklin's family owned a candle making shop? By the age of 10, Ben was cutting wicks and filling molds. Colonists discovered that boiled bayberries, also known as Myrica pensilvanica, produced a sweet smelling wax. This process took a long time, so these candles were only used for special occasions. In the 1800s, four new inventions improved the process of candle making, creating the candles we use today. First, a new type of wick made of tightly woven cotton string would self-trim as it burned. It also did not leave a mess. Second, they began adding steric acid to wax, which made candles harder and less breakable. Third were new factories that could produce up to 1,500 candles per hour, making them cheaper and more readily available. Finally, in 1859, oil was discovered in Titusville, PA. A byproduct of oil is paraffin. Paraffin burns cleanly, brightly, and with little smell. This was the final major change. Paraffin quickly became the main ingredient in today's candles. By the 1900s, with the growth of electricity in homes, very few people needed to use candles as a light source. Today, we use candles to scent our homes and celebrate our many traditions. Let's learn how to make two different candles. Make sure you have an adult to help. Candle making can get hot. Our first candle is a layered jar candle. You will need a glass jar, eight inch cotton wick, paper clip, pencil, paraffin or soy wax, six to eight ounces, depending on the size of your jar, crayons without the paper wrapper for color, and two paper cups for color. Tie the paper clip to the end of the wick and twist the other end around a pencil. Place the paper clip at the bottom of the jar. Fill the paper cup with small pieces of wax. Leave some room for the crayon. Break the crayon into small pieces and place on top of the wax. Microwave for two minutes. If the wax is not melted, stir the wax and add 20 more seconds at a time. Do not boil the wax or it will separate from the colors as it cools. Stir the wax and pour into the jar. Center your wick using the paper clip. Let cool. If the cramps are not fully melt, you can reuse it for your next candle project. Repeat the steps with your second color and cool. If you like scented candles, add a few drops of essential oil. Pour in layer three. Once cool, keep repeating each step until the jar is full. The second type of candle is a dip candle and will require hot water. Remember to have adult to help. You will need a tall metal can without the label, large pot, container for cold water, six ounces of paraffin wax, 12 inch cotton wick, crayon without paper wrapper, and two paper clips. Break the wax into small pieces and fill the can with wax. Place the can in the pot. Fill the pot with water about one third of the way up the can. Add essential oils for a nice scent and pieces of crayon for color. Use medium heat to melt the wax. Do not boil the water. As the wax melts, carefully stir the mixture to ensure it melts evenly. While the wax melts, fill a second container halfway with cold water. Set it near the pot. Tie a paper clip to each end of the wick. Once the wax is fully melted, dip the wax in the melted wax and then into the cold water. Repeat the process over 
and over again until the wick is nicely covered. Clip off the paper clip. After dipping the candle in cold water, you can mold the wax with your hands to ensure a nice shape. Once the candle is a good shape, start dipping again. Repeat the dipping and molding process until you're happy with the size and shape of your candle. Once fully cooled and hardened, trim your wicks. Light and enjoy. Thank you for exploring candles with me. Visit our webpage for more videos and activities to help you explore Pennsylvania.